Hey guys, it's Kevin again, and this is going to be my review for Pretty Little Liars Season 4, Episode 21, She's Come Undone. And I was really looking forward to this episode, especially after the amazing episode we got last week. I knew this one would not disappoint me. I knew wherever the show was heading, it was going to be a great one, and it did not disappoint. It really did not. I love this episode. Was it as good as last week's? No. I don't think any episode at this point can top last week's. I think last week will stay as the best episode, and I don't think there's going to be any episode that could top it. Maybe the finale, but it's just, it, the show has gone so much more interesting now that I can't really say anything bad about it because it's gone so much more interesting. Especially, I mean, with all, really all the storylines, it's gone very, very interesting, and I really love that. So, um, let's just get to, um, the episode. So, I, again, because I, I really, really did enjoy it. Let's first talk about Arya, who, right now, Arya is by far the most badass character on this show. She really is. She's a complete badass. She really just, oh, she was awesome in this episode. Because, you know, she's just so pissed off at Ezra for doing this to her after all these years and what I really like was that we see them all talking and then we we kind of get a scene of how they actually met which we never saw we knew that they knew each other but we never actually saw how they met um he met her at a, a bar and uh, it was like a bar or something and um basically he she thought he would you know uh, he thought, he pretended that he didn't know she was older than she was, you know, younger than she was, things like that. And, uh, it was interesting to see that because we never really did get to see that and I really liked that, um, in this episode that we actually got to see how they met. That was definitely, uh, really great and I really enjoyed that a lot. So Arya is just so pissed off at him. She does not know what to do at this point. She actually goes over to his apartment ready to basically just attack him and interrogate him and she's just go to his apartment. He's not there though. What she does see is uh, a tape recording of Ali pictures of herself and Ezra's detailed diary containing facts that she did not even know about. And when she reads these facts, she gets so pissed off, she destroys his entire apartment. Like, she's breaking... I mean, this scene was amazing. This was probably my favorite scene in the episode. I mean, I, I think whatever happens, we will always call this episode as the one where Arya destroys Ezra's apartment. Uh, you know, she's breaking glass, she's throwing anything she can. It was just, it was amazing to see. And I think, again, Lucy Hale gave a great performance. And uh, if she does not get nominated for an Emmy this year, I, that she definitely should be. Because she was really great in this episode. And I thought that definitely that was probably the best scene of the episode. Was just the scene where she freaked out like that. So eventually everybody finds her. She's unconscious on, she's not unconscious on the floor. She's just on the floor and, you know, they can see that she's very scared of what's happening. And uh, she really, at this point, just does not know what to do. You gotta feel bad for the girl, though, because, I mean, she was used all these years. It's not like, I mean, I know some people are saying, oh, I can't feel any sympathy for her, you know, things like that. But here's what I think. I mean, she was used by... Ezra, no matter what you say, she was used by him, and she loved him all these years, and now all those years that she loved him are basically bullshit to him, and she doesn't believe a word, and you know, it, it, you just, you gotta feel bad for her, like, I, I completely feel bad for her, and uh, you know, it's, it's pretty big what happens from here, so you know, they, they see her there, and um, they're very worried. It all, eventually, all the liars, they see her there. She's on the floor in the middle of it all, the broken furniture. Um, and uh, Emma, Emily and Hannah, Emma, <laughs> Emily and Hannah uh, try to help Arya out. And Spencer stays behind and grabs as many of Ezra's files and photos as she can. Um, you know, because they're really, they also want to try to figure some stuff out about Ezra. They're not 100% sure that, um, he's lying. You know, Ari is so pissed off. And then we get another great scene. She's ripping out every single page of Ezra's book one by one, burning them. Hannah's trying to comfort her. She reassures Arya that Ezra fooled all of them, not just her. And I think Hannah was being, uh, pretty good towards Arya in this episode. She wasn't being you know, pushy or anything like that. She was just saying, look, maybe the guy, maybe what you think is not true, and you can't, you know, we understand you want to take out your aggression, but you can't just go around and destroy all his stuff. 
And then the biggest scene of the episode is when she heads to the diner to get some food for her and Aria. Um, you know, she has there. And uh, what ends up happening is, um, what, what ends up happening is Aria actually goes to, you know, she finds a letter fold up in Ezra's book from a publishing company. And this is pretty big because she calls the publishing company, asks when the book will be published, and the secretary reveals, and she pretends to be um, someone who is working with Ezra in the book. Uh, definitely really great uh, acting from Lucy Hale here. But the secretary reveals they haven't set a date, and Ezra is actually right at their office right now discussing it, and Arya hangs up, and uh, Hannah finds Arya walking down the sidewalk. She is headed to uh, the principal's off, uh, the principal's house to tell him all about her inappropriate relationship with Ezra. And Hannah says, you know, this is probably not the best idea. Not only are you going to be in trouble, but Ezra will, you know, not only will this affect Ezra's teaching career, but he will go to jail. And at this point, Arya actually wants him to go to jail. You know, she tells him that she does not believe a word he says and uh, I, I really like that that she does not believe this whole book thing she doesn't believe it now because they said that he was right there and for all we know that could have been a setup he could have known that she was gonna call and that could have been a setup so I, I don't believe a word I don't believe a word that Ezra says at this point we didn't even see Ezra in this episode which was good because it was time for Arya to you know unravel about things uh, so, um, basically, at the last minute, though, Arya does change her mind and heads home, but Hannah tries to go with her, but Arya informs her she wants nothing to do with her, and she just wants to be left alone. And you know what? It's probably nothing against Hannah. It's just that Arya's been through so much right now that she just doesn't want anything to do with anybody. She wants to be isolated from society, which is not a good thing, because if you can't be isolated from society like this, and Arya needs to know that, so, then we get, um, we see Emily, she goes to Arya's house to check on her, she, but Arya's actually packing a bag, she informs Emily she's leaving, she doesn't know where she's going, but she needs to leave. Do I think Arya made a good decision to leave? Yes, Arya needs help, she needs a lot of help, and she needs to just find a place where she can be by herself, because clearly she's not stable right now, she's very unstable, and she, she needs to be by herself, so... Arya's plot was so strong in the episode, definitely my favorite plot of the episode, but now let's get to Spencer's plot, because Spencer's plot is also very interesting. As we know, she needs help. She needs serious help. She's basically trying to trick her, uh, kick her drug habit, but thanks to A, that doesn't go so well, because her, she can, because her parents actually want her to go to rehab. And she convinces her parents that she doesn't need to go to rehab. She says, I'm still applying to colleges. I can't have Bradley in rehab on my record. But they give in. But what happens is we do see that Spencer's kind of withdrawing, you know. And if you don't know what withdrawing is, if you have, if, when you've been addicted to drugs for a while and you've basically promised yourself to stop it, you can't. You get addicted to it. So Spencer's officially addicted to this drug. And I'm, I'm thinking, I mean, it's like, it's Adderall. It's really... I mean, it's, it's Adderall. It's nothing where... I mean, she needs serious help, though. I mean, stuff like that, even Adderall, can make you go batshit insane. It might not physically hurt her, but it's going to make her go crazy. She's going to be like Arya. She's even worse than Arya because she's just so crazy right now. She's come undone. Perfect time for the episode because everyone's basically undone in this episode. Um... But then we get a huge flashback. I mean, do you remember why? You remember um, in the first episode when Spencer was unconscious? There's a reason why. She finds out that uh, um, she might have heard Allie with a shovel on a drug-induced rage. And basically we find out that uh, Spencer took drugs when she was with Allie. Um, you know, she took drugs and... Uh, by the episode's end, you know, what what happens is that she finds out that Miss De Laurentiis actually tried to make her forget that everything happened. So pretty much she thinks that she was like, that's why she was unconscious, because Mrs. De Laurentiis tried to make her think, it, you know, it never happened. But by the end of the episode, her parents and Toby want her to get help, but she doesn't want to. She runs away, um, you know, she runs, she runs upstairs to her room because she doesn't want that help. And it's very bad. She's acting like a zombie, pretty much, and it's, it's not good at all for her. I feel bad for her, and we're, just, we're definitely going to have to see what happens there because I think it's not going to be good for her. So um, that was Spencer's plot. I thought Spencer's plot was also really strong, and I definitely really enjoyed it. Now let's go to Emily's plot, which, surprisingly, Emily's plot was actually very interesting because 
Um, now that Paige knows all this stuff about Allie, she tells Emily to stay the hell away from her. Uh, just stay away from Allie. Don't, I don't want anything to do with, you know, I don't want you to do anything to yourself or to her, you know. And I think she's being a very supportive girlfriend to um, Emily. I haven't really loved Paige, uh, Paige's character, but I really liked her in this episode because all she's trying to do is protect her. Uh, Paige is very confused. She sees this ward of cash in Emily's purse, and it's not until Paige discovers uh, Emily's trying to transport the funds, um, you know, she then tells Paige that, Allie, that Allie's alive. You know, Paige finds that out in this episode. So the operation is to get all the money, um, you know, that, but it doesn't really work because Paige makes Emily promise to stop any and all communication with, um, with Allie. And uh, Emily agrees on one condition, that she delivers the cash she has in her purse to Allie and Paige is relieved. But Emily is upset that she was given an ultimatum. But the biggest thing in the episode is not just that plot alone. Because uh, after this happens, we see Paige. She leaves a note in the cop car telling them that uh, Allison is alive and lists the P.O. box that Emily sent the money to. So that was definitely really big. And I definitely uh, thought that was... Um, one of the biggest parts of the episode, because they're getting closer and closer to finding out who A is. Pretty much they're implying that it's Ezra, and I think it is Ezra, but we don't know that for sure. I think pretty much it's going to be Ezra, though. I don't think the finale is going to be as shocking as we think it's going to be. Usually, Pretty Little Liars always says, oh, shocking finale coming up, and usually it is shocking, but now we know that Ezra's A, so, I mean, we pretty much know that, so I don't think there's going to be that shocking of a finale. And then Hannah. Now, Hannah's plot wasn't even much of a plot. She really didn't have much of a plot, except that when she was trying to give uh, get money for Arya for dinner, she kisses uh, Holbrook in public. And, uh, you know, we know we know she misses Caleb, but really, you know, Holbrook, why is she kissing Holbrook? She just kissed Travis a few weeks back. Why'd she do that? And, you know, it's, it's just, it's weird. Did he save Travis's dad, you know, Mr. Hobbs from a month of jail time? But the guy's not to be trusted. And, you know, it's, it's definitely going to be interesting to see what happens there as well. So that was Hannah's plot. Not really much to it, but um, that was her plot. So overall, that was your episode. And I got to say, um, you know, uh, definitely really great stuff from Pretty Little Liars. I know it was not as good as last week's. I, again, I don't think anything can top last week's. I think last week's was just... Such a great episode, and nothing can really top it at this point. I think it's just, a, just it's getting a lot better. I definitely see that, that it is getting a lot better. And we're getting closer and closer to finding out who A is, and it's just going to be really, really great. We know who, we pretty much know, but they haven't exactly confirmed that Ezra is A, but I pretty much have this feeling that he is. Um, I think the book thing, like Arya, I don't believe a word he says, um, and I'm definitely looking forward to seeing where that's going to go. Where will Arya go? You know, she says she has to go to somewhere better, but where is that? Where do you think that is? Um, is that going to be, is she going to go, like, far away with her mother and live with her? I don't think she'd do that. Um, do you think she'll just, like, get her own apartment? I, I mean, this is probably only going to last for a few episodes, and she's probably going to come back in the finale. But at this point, she's just in such a bad position, you know, state of just she's so wrecked that there's nothing she can really come back from you know it's very it's gonna be very hard for her to um come back from this it's gonna be very hard for her to not you know to move on from this I don't think she will be able to move on from this because it's just gonna be really really hard for her to do this and I'm, I'm definitely interested in seeing what is exactly going to happen here and I'm definitely interested in that also, um, Spencer, what do you think is happening with Spencer? Do you think she hit, um, Allie with a shovel? Do you think she did that? Or is, or is she just thinking of this because of the drugs? Really, what, what is that all about? Also, do you think she needs the help? I definitely think she does. Why isn't she getting the help? You know, that, that was definitely a huge reveal. Also, what's, um, what's happening with Paige? Do you think Paige will listen to Emily and do what Emily told her to do? Oh, uh, we'll have to see. And also, Hannah, why did she kiss Detective Holbrook? What was that all about? I'm really not sure. Um, but that's it for this review. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in my next video, which will be my review of the originals. So, see you then. Bye.